season, lethal lefties Joe Saunders and Dallas Braden will square off. In the first meeting, Dallas outpitched Joe through six to earn his first win in 2010. The rematch a month later, Joe went the distance as he dominated with a four-inch shutout to outshine Dallas's second career complete game. Who will dazzle tonight? Stay tuned for Game 3. It's the A's and the Angels, only on Comcast Sportsnet, California. There's a look at the AL West standings. The Angels a half game back. The A's one game back of the Rangers. The Rangers are blowing out the Mariners right now. So that is the updated standings. And that is Joe Saunders. He's going to make the start tonight for the Angels. He will be opposed by Dallas Braden. So it's a battle of left-handers in game three of this four-game series. It's the Angels and the Athletics coming up at Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a night of Oakland A's baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Big night last night offensively. The A's with a season-high 18 hits, but uh, stretched out a little bit. The month of June, the A's have played eight games in the month of June, and Kurt Suzuki has really heated up this month. Well, the A's have hit 12 home runs. Kurt Suzuki has hit three, two in Boston, and then, of course, last night a big three-run home run. But you look at what Kurt Suzuki's doing. Look at this swing against the knuckleballer. He stayed back almost like a slow-pitch softball hitter. He did it twice. He did it in back-to-back -back at bats. But if you watch him against the fastballer from last night in Jared Weaver, it's almost the identical swing. And here it is. Fastball up. He stayed back. He crushed it. And after the game, he said, I definitely crushed it. And it showed a big three-run home run, the first other than a single that the A's had hit prior to that. 12 singles and then the three-run home run. But he is an all-star, and we hope he's at Anaheim come next month. Joe Saunders will start for the Angels. The A's have seen him many, many times. And uh, he was very good earlier this year against the Athletics. In fact, so good, it was a four-hit shutout. Well, that was mid-May, and he did an outstanding job. He's got a sneaky fastball. He'll paint the corner. He'll look inside with a fastball. He'll also change up and breaking ball. So he has the complete package. It's just a matter, and surprisingly, that he is sub-500 with a record. But he is a very good pitcher, one of five very good ones in this Angels rotation. And Dallas Braden still looking for that first win since the perfect game. We'll see it tonight is indeed the night. Game three of the four games series each team has won one so far we'll have lineups at first pitch when we come back to the coliseum
brought to you by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Corona. Relax and refresh with Corona and Lime. Welcome back to the Coliseum. Game three of this four-game series, the A's and the Angels. A lot of cards have been exchanged, and in just a matter of moments, the A's will take the field. Game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free, and the boardwalk is open daily. 62 degrees on a cool and breezy night. Flags whipping around a little more than usual. Sweatshirts on. And the A's will try to build on a big win last night. 10 to 1, and they had 18 hits. Can they do it again tonight or come close to it? Well, we'll find out. As Kurt Suzuki and the rest of the gang head out to the field. Dallas Braden will be looking for his fifth win of the year. Here's the lineup that Braden will face for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Ibar, the switch hitter at the top. And it's Kendrick Abreu Hunter, Matsui Napoli, Rivera, Franson, and Quinlan. Behind Dallas Braden, it'll be Fox. Matt Carson is getting a start tonight in center field. Sweeney's in right. Kuzminoff, Pennington, Rosales, Barton on the infield. Kurt Suzuki is the catcher. Dallas Braden, the pitcher. Main starting pitcher stats are brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. And there they are for Dallas Braden, his 13th start. Four and five record. And, of course, uh, Look at his last five starts. He has lost three for various reasons. And, of course, in Baltimore, if it's just four innings, ankle problem. He had food poisoning against the Tigers here. But I think Dallas Braden is healthy. He's faced the Angels a couple of times this year. He has a win early in the season back on the 11th of April. And that guy hit a home run. Bobby Abreu hit a home run off Dallas Braden, but he was the victim of this shutout thrown by Joe Saunders on the 14th of May. So let's hope things change for the good side. Get Dallas Braden back to 500 mark and go from there. A's come in with a record of 31 and 29 and the Angels 32 and 29. So just a half game difference. There's a good look at Matt Carson who's in the lineup tonight. And that is Joe Saunders who will take the mound for the Angels. The Angels one game, one of the series, four to two, and then, as I said, ten to one, the A's win last night. A day game tomorrow. And that'll wrap up this series. So Eric Ibar, the switch hitting shortstop, will lead things off. Ibar hitting 252 with a homer and 11 RBIs. And very quickly, Derek Barton up even with the bag at first base with the threat of a bunt from Ibar. He is pretty good with the bat. Goes after the first pitch and first fouls pitch. it back. Seven on that. Almost like a BP fastball, 85 miles per hour. Remember Braden in that last start. Morneau hit the home run. Did you mention that? No. No, okay. Bobby Abreu hit the home run. The last start. Right. Not against the Angels, but against the Twins. Right. His, his last start. Which was, that is just foul. But he gave up the home run to Morneau, but then retired 15 of the next 16. So he ended up pitching fairly well, but. Got the no decision in a game that the Twins won five to four in eleven innings. Well, there's some pitchers that have a tough time getting through the first inning. Sure. And Dallas gave up the two home runs and or the two run home run and did a great job from that point. The A's losing the game in eleven innings, five to four, no decision for Dallas. Strike three call, fastball on the inside corner. Well, we have Tommy Cam, but. Kurt Suzuki moving inside. Ibar is all over the plate. He is close to the plate, and of course, a fastball inside. He did that because couldn't handle it anyway. But Kurt Suzuki set up on the inside, and Mike Riley, the home plate umpire, right down the shoot. And even if you don't catch him, it's a strike. And that's what happened in the first pitch to Kendrick. Dallas has to pitch inside. Of course, all left-handers have to pitch that well inside to make the changeup. 
that much more effective outside. We'll see it from Saunders as well against the A's right handers. He's got a piece did Kendrick hitting 261, four home runs and 37 runs batted in. So a big RBI year for Kendrick. One of those RBIs coming in this series. Change up stays outside. Two and two the count. Angels are 16 and 16 on the road, and this is a 14 game road trip for them. That's right, 14 game trip. And it has been a good trip so far, seven and two. So two more games here tonight and tomorrow, and then they will play at the Dodgers over the weekend. So the final three games of that road trip, uh, they will be sleeping in their own bed, which is nice. Still a road game. Bounce just foul. And this is the ninth meeting of the year between these two teams. And the Angels have won five. The A's have won three so far. Again, the 2 2 to Kendrick. And another foul ball. You don't see this very often here, Ray. But Dallas Braden's got baggy pants on, and you can see how windy it is. Yeah. Uh, Jack Cuss coming up from batting practice saying, standing out in left field and the outfield in general, how windy it was. Let's see the view quarter. The see if it affects, affects balls in the air. Sweeney has no problem with that one. And after tomorrow's game, fans are invited to meet that man, Adam Rosie Rosales. He'll be on A's Talk with Chris Townsend at the Holiday Inn Hotel A's Suites at 77 Hagelberger. That's across the street, of course, here in Oakland. That's tomorrow after the A's Angels game. Your chance to meet Adam Rosales, and I'm sure Adam, as soon as the game is over, he won't have his car running. He will be running himself out the back gate at Hagelberger. Right to the Holiday Inn. Waiting and talking. Good baseball. Adam Rosales is a good baseball man. Rosales playing second base tonight. Mark Ellis will actually be in the lineup, but he's the designated hitter tonight. Just a bit low. 2 0 to Bobby Abreu, who's hitting 264 with seven homers and 30 runs batted in. Hit a home run in the first game of the series, a two run shot. On the ground to Rosales. He grabs it. And Dallas Braden has a three up, three down top of the first inning. So the A's will come to bat against Joe Saunders in the bottom of the first. No score.
Ellis, the designated hitter tonight, and he's leading off. He'll be followed by Bart Suzuki, Kuzminov. Rosales hits fifth. Sweeney drops down to six. Fox, Carson, and Pennington at the bottom. Rivera, Hunter, Abreu in the outfield defensively for the Angels. Franson, Ibar, Kendrick, Quinlan on the infield. Mike Napoli again behind the plate for the left-hander, Joe Saunders. First pitch to Mark Ellis is in first strike for Saunders. Fastball in first pitch from Saunders. So that's exactly what we're talking about. Both pitchers pitching kind of the same way. And Mark Ellis doesn't wait around. As the second pitch he sees, he lines a single to right field. Now Joe Saunders actually two games against the Athletics. Both times it was Braden pitching for the Athletics. He is making his 13th start. 10 of 4 career against the Athletics. 33 strikeouts, 33 walks. So I wouldn't say that's a very good ratio. You, you don't like to have that ratio if you're a pitcher. But the A's means they have to be a little bit patient if they're going to do that. So Saunders will now face Derek Barton. First pitch, left center field, and that's going to get down in front of Rivera. Well, let's hurry up and give you the keys to the game. Yeah. Brought to you by Toyota. A lot of good things happened already. It is Brayton versus Saunders round three, as we mentioned. Dallas is ready to go. 18 hits last night. Of course, keep on swinging A's. You know, with Rajay down. Uh, set the table the other way and other ways and how about just this way two opposite field hits one by right hander to right field one by left hander going to left field three pitches two hits try to make something cool get something going. so the red hot suzuki steps in eight homers 28 runs batted in for kirk Last year, it's more so in the second half of the season, but he started racking up RBIs, and well, they just kept coming. Before you know it, he was over 80. Well, it's too bad that he was hurt out of the month of May, but had a very good April and picking it up very strongly in the month of June. Well, this is his 40th game. And for the A's, they're 61st, so he missed 21 games. You figure conservatively, say he has 10 or 12 more RBIs, sure. which is the average amount over that time period. And now you're talking maybe in the top 10 in RBIs. This is what he pops up on the infield. And it's going to be the second baseman, Kendrick. Infield fly rule is called. So Suzuki. Pops out. 27 RBIs as a catcher, third most in the American League. And again, that missed over 20 games. That's what everybody's saying. It's Joe Maurer who lead the American League catchers in voting. That's a, it's an odd zone given. It's definitely going to happen. And somehow, some way, Kurt should find his way to Anaheim. Kuzminov takes low. Remember, Kurt, in 2008, Ray, 42 RBIs. Last year, 88 RBIs. And basically the same amount of games played each season. So he more than doubled his RBI total from 08 to 09. I wouldn't bring that up to him right now, though. Oh, no, no. I think he's a little bit upset. Had a couple of guys on base and got a 90 mile hour fastball. Maybe try to do a little bit too much with it from Saunders. Popped it up. But he stays back, as we showed in our open, the three home runs he hit, two against Wakefield, one against Weaver last night. That is great hitting. Swing and a miss by Kuzminov on a 2-0 pitch. Kuzminov's got 30 RBIs. That is the team high for the Athletics. Now three and one. Ellison Barton let off the first with back to back hits. Ken 
Hendrick trying to keep Ellis as close as he can. Pop foul on the right side up over the Angels dugout. So full count. But a Suzuki and now to Kuzman off in hitters counts. He's making pretty good pitches. Dallas Brayton wondering, can this club score him some runs? He'd be so fortunate to get some offensive support in the first inning. Yeah, not just runs, early runs. And Mazzaro a win last night. Five innings, 86 pitches, but good enough for the W. So he knows all about run support. He had plenty last night. Kuzman off. Skies one with the runners going. Shallow right. Bray who has it. And Ellis and Barton get back. And that's the second out. Well, on the 11th of April in Anaheim, again, the A's came back and won. They gave the win to Dallas Bray. It was Adam Rosales in the 40,000 plus. Got a chance to see Rosie. Do his sprinting around the bases with his first home run. To remember the athletics, and that took exactly 15.5 seconds. I think was the correct time around the bases. He's now got four homers on the year, 21 runs batted in. RBI chance here in the bottom of the first. Curve drops in first strike. Solace hitting in that fifth spot. Salas played shortstop in game one of the series. He was not in the lineup last night. He grounds this one to Ibar and flips to Kendrick. Side retired. So the A's get two hits and they strand a pair. No score after one. No score after one inning here at the Coliseum. It's really noticeable, Ray, this time of year. You see a lot more kids at the ballpark with school out. Your team say that? Well, attendance goes up a little bit. Kids get out of school, and it's true, it does. I like to say the weather warms up, the kids out of school, and team playing well. It's a great combination for good attendance. Got the gloves, got their team caps on, and the teams are playing for. Base hit for Torrey Hunter. 
Hunter, that's his first hit in this series. Tough guy to keep down, and he has a leadoff single here in the second. I'm happy it's a ground ball, base hit. Ball left out over the plate, a little bit different than the one high bar got. It's in a 1 1 fastball, kind of leaked out towards the middle of the plate. Always aggressive, Torrey Hunter. But he would not swing at a first pitch changeup from Dallas. Hideki Matsui steps in. Braden had that great stretch, not allowing anybody to steal a base off him. Danny Valencia, the rookie, stole second base in the second inning of start against the Twins last weekend. That was the first stolen base that Braden had allowed since August 20th of 2008. Well, even that one, it looked like maybe a little miscommunication as far as coverage of second. So he can throw a little bit towards the shortstop side of second. I mean, even in, like that last move, if you make one good move when the guy gets at first base, that may stop his intention of running right there. And I'm not saying Torrey Hunter's necessarily going to swipe it back. Well, the Angels will use a hit and run a lot. There may not be a lot of straight stealing attempts just because of Braden's move. And Mike Zosha has a stopwatch, as we've seen in this series. Same with Alfredo Griffin at first base. And they know how quickly Dallas releases the ball to the plate. That one runs inside. And I think the biggest thing, when Dallas, in that case, had a high leg kick, but his leg came straight up, freezes the runner at first base because he can throw to first or home. See that flat bill cap? He's looking out of the corner of his eyes, peripheral vision. And he's looking right now. I can look at Torrey Hunter to see if he's getting a big enough lead that he can quite make the quick move over to first base. So Craig Breslow taking his and just bending the heck out of the bill. But a little bit different than what Dallas is trying to do on the mound. I think Craig does not have a good pickoff move, but his eyes just kind of dart back and forth. And you can watch the runner and get the sign at the same time. Ooh, close pitch. Hold the ball by Mike Riley to even the count at two and two. Now go to the outside corner. Riley pointing to his left, indicating the ball is outside, not low, definitely have the height. Is that that quick step off man. again. This one. Grounded slowly to short. Pennington flips to Rosales to throw to first in time. Double play for the Athletics. Now Rosales and Pennington talking. Pennington pretty good feed to Rosales who has a very strong arm and Matsui doesn't run well because of knee problems. But this was kind of a catch and throw quickly. Ball was not hit particularly hard and maybe that's why Rosales just unloaded as quickly as he could as Matsui made it a close play at first. In the neighborhood was Adam Rosales. Mr. Rogers neighborhood He's come across the bag. Maybe that's what they were talking about. That's the first double play the A's have turned in the last seven games. Change up Napoli way out ahead. He swings and misses. Well, Rosales coming across the bag and. He actually caught the bat ball with both feet on the third base side of the bag. But umpires will give the benefit of the doubt to the middle infielders. Talk about in the neighborhood play. An 0 2 pitch, and Napoli gets a fastball and he lines it to center for a hit. So Braden's probably not real happy about that. Well, especially go inside and lead the ball out of the plate, and that's the key. 
It's not so much the selection, it's the location of the pitch. And after Ibar striking him out with a fastball in, he has not gotten the ball inside far enough to the right handers. So Juan Rivera steps in. Rivera is one for eight in this series. He scored a run. Numbers down a little bit for Rivera, hitting 230. Does have eight home runs, 25 runs batted in. Last year, Rivera hit 25 homers and knocked in 88. Very short lead at first. And that one's popped up. And it's going to be for Pennington. Straddling the line. Makes the catch. Side retired. A couple of hits. And a runner stranded for the Angels in the top of the second. Our morning show, condense it to a one hour show. Show it at 11 p.m. Best moments, the best interviews. Carry with Tony Bruno on Ravage Remix. Weeknights at 11 p.m. Ryan Sweeney to lead it off. The red hot Ryan Sweeney. Bottom of the second inning. No score. Sweeney, Fox, and Carson. So how hot is Ryan Sweeney? Well, he's now hitting 324 with the eighth best average in the American League. He's six for nine in this series. And he has nine hits in his last 14 at bats. Kind of the magic one. We'll see how it goes against Joe Saunders. They are playing him to left field. Rivera playing very shallow in left field. Torrey Hunter playing very shallow at center, really left center. Wow. Big gap from center field over to Bobby Abreu and right. One two pitch and a fastball swing and a miss by Sweeney, and that's the first strikeout for Saunders. Saunders has really. Started to bear down his fastball inside corner. Pitch at Ryan Sweeney at times will fall, otherwise, inside out, go to left field. But two hits, and now he's retired four in a row as Saunders. Jake Fox to left, but he got it off the end of the bat into foul territory. Rivera has it. Jake Fox, the big swing. 
fooled me a little bit. Got down off the end of the bat. Now you know why outfielders break back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was an announcer breaking back right there. That's right. <laughs> it's all right. A real big swing. You, you think something special is going to happen? Let's see Matt Carson get the call back and tonight be in center field. Played an inning last night. Went out to left field in the ninth inning. Carson was a very hot hitter for the River Cats when he got called up. Jay Davis, watch this one. Torrey Hunter's right there, and Joe Saunders has a three up, three down inning with a strikeout. On to the third, no score. Perfect game in 1968. Catfish was two and two with an ERA of 5.51. He gave up nine home runs. My expectations grow a little bit after a perfect game. Dallas Brayton trying to get back in the win column. All three with two no decisions since that perfect game. It's not really pitched for them. In those five games, an ERA of so shade under four and a half, so not great, but not terrible. Well, it's just like tonight, he matches up against another yeah. pretty good left hander and Joe Saunders. You look at the lowest run support in the American League. The A's have two in the top four. Numbers three and four are Dallas Brayton and Ben Sheets. Zach Grinke, last year's American League Cy Young Award winner. And he did. Handles the in-between hop and throws, and it's past Barton into the Angels dugout. And Kevin Franson is going to get second base. But Derek Barton stretched for it or just reached up, and then it's all of a sudden the dugout. Let's see if the throw would have taken him off the bag. Yeah, he tried to keep his foot on the bag. But a bit of a strange play. Yeah. Derek kind of went up and he didn't. When he went straight up, the ball took off on him, a little bit of a sinker. But it is an E6, so if Pennington gets the air. I think Derek went after thinking that the ball's going to be right there in his glove, and he's thinking, oh, it's off his glove. Sixth air of the year for Pennington. Third air for the A's in this series. Quinlan takes just a bit inside. Rob Quinlan playing first base. Put 
Quinlan came in the game last night late to play first base. He did not get a chance to hit. We've seen Quinlan in the big leagues with the Angels for four full seasons, but this year he's actually spent some time in the minor leagues. Been back and forth a couple times. But he's always been great against left handed pitching. Yeah. And he's had big hits against the A's over the years as well. And he takes low ball four. So an air and a walk, and the Angels have something cooking here in the third. You know, Ibar is going to be money. Now, buddy. And you got to be careful because even if he's bunting for a sacrifice, he's a great bunter and he's got great speed. Cruz is coming down the line at third. And it's butted. And Kuzminov's going to let it go, and it stays fair, and it's going to be a base hit. Perfect bunt. And it was decision time for Kuzminov. And it was such a good bunt. If he tried to feel it barehanded, I don't know if he'd thrown out eye bar in the first place. Now batting, number 47. Started to spin, but once he got on the grass and too far in on the grass, and the spin actually took it more towards fair territory farther in. And so an air, a walk, and a bunt base hit, not one ball out of the infield, and Dallas Braden's in serious trouble. So here's Kendrick. Swing and a miss on a changeup. Kendrick. 344 average with runners in scoring position. That's why he's got a high amount of RBIs. And he lines one just fouled on the right field line. A couple of feet. A couple of feet difference of three runs and the guys going back to the respective bases because that's how close ball just down the line, slicing enough to take it into foul territory. Francis, Quinlan, Ibar are the runners. And there's a liner. Pennington throws the second. Not quite in time. Very close. And you saw Pennington look like he took a quick look at yeah. third. Yeah, he was trying to look around to see who's off farthest. And I don't know if he'd thrown immediately if Rosales would have been in second base. And I don't think he would have been there. The look to third and then back was Rosales at second. No, he was just getting there as the throw arrived. So I don't think it was too far off to be able to get to the bag quickly enough for the double play. Good base running by all three. Line drive. There's no place to go except back to the base. Brave a fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Abby Brave grounded out to Rosales to end the first inning. Fastball inside. Tommy Cam's back right on the corner. Mike Riley came right over the head of Kurt Suzuki. Watch Mike Riley, the veteran umpire here, kind of move with the catcher. Braden tried to get back to the same spot, just missed. One and one. It's a Tommy Cam. This one just off the plate. And see Mike Riley? And that's what an umpire should do. Just follow the catcher. That way you're squared up. With the catcher and the home plate. Mike Riley's been around a long time. He is the crew chief. And deservedly so. So now it's an even count, two and two, bases loaded, one out. Well, all fastballs inside just did not want Bobby Abreu to extend his arms. Can he go back in there or throw him a good slider? 
to roll over on the pitch and get a 4 6 3 double play. Just hope to get a ground ball. He runs well, especially from the left side. Swag and a miss. He struck him out. Tough guy to strike out. And Braden just did it. Well, the fastball's inside. Good fastball's inside. Set up. Suzuki moving late with a slider away and got him on the outside corner. And especially to get him to open up like that after the fastball's in, maybe thinking another one and just trying at the last second to flick the ball, hit, make contact, but none there. One more to get for Braden. It's Torrey Hunter who had a base hit in the second inning. Just a bit off the plate. Is. Dallas Bray. There's a line drive, and that's a base hit to left field. Franson scores. Here comes Quinlan. Fox's throw to the plate. Dug out by Suzuki, and he tagged him out. One run scores, but Quinlan thrown out by Fox, and another terrific play by the catcher, Kurt Suzuki. Angels get a run. But not two. with an even better play and they cut down second runner at the plate. We'll look at that in just a moment. Pennington, Ellis, and Barton for the A's here in the bottom of the third. First pitch from Saunders is a strike. Saunders has retired six in a row after giving up hits to Ellis and Barton to start the bottom of the first. Dry right into the glove of Howie Kendrick, and that's out number one. By Torrey Hunter with two out here. It looked like it might be two runs, but a one hop to Jake Fox and a perfect throw. Good Suzuki, what a scoop behind the plate. Short hopped him, and he got a scoop. And watch the tag. First of all, the catch, the tag by Quinlan trying to go wide. And there's Mike Riley making the call. And a great 7 to 2 put out. The base is loaded and nobody out. The Angels only get one. That's a heck of a save. It'd be like a goalie save in the Stanley Cup. Speaking of, I think that's what Suzuki did. <laughs> the Stanley Cup goalie save. What is the score? It's tied after regulation. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Blackhawks with a win and the Stanley Cup is theirs. The Flyers trying to send it to game seven. So they are tied 3 3 heading to overtime. They don't have shootouts in the Stanley Cup, do they? <laughs> I don't think so. But Suzuki, the short hop, this is a tough play to handle, but it's reached up the ball in his glove and at the same motion tagged out Quinlan. And Jake Fox, a good throw from left field. And this is going to play on the other end. And a pretty nice play there by Rob Quinlan, taking a base hit away from Mark Ellis. So I got a question for you on the Suzuki play. Well, slicing back towards Quinlan, who made a nice diving catch, and Mark Ellis again trying to go to right field as he did in the first inning. It's two outs for Barton. So on that play, Kurt Suzuki moving away from home plate toward the ball. Now, would he be doing that to hopefully catch the ball in the air, make it a little bit of an easier play? Even though he didn't there, but it was kind of a a short hop, which is an easier catch than an in-between yeah. hop. If he stayed back, he probably would never have gotten it. Plus, throw was offline enough up the line that by trying to go after it, knowing that if he stays at home plate, see right there, he starts right. to go there. Yeah, and then that's and see if he's back at home plate, that ball is towards Mike Riley, the home plate umpire, and Quinlan gets by him. So, gotcha. in a sense, he kind of went after it, trying to do exactly what he did, which was his hands to be able to catch the ball. And apply the tag at the same time. Yeah, that throw is about three feet up the line and heading in the wrong sure. direction if he stays at home plate. Barton flips one into left center for a hit. That's really what you do as a catcher. Ideally, you want to stand at home plate and have the throw come to you at the plate so he can block the runner off. Napoli had a couple of plays last night for the Angels where he was at home and tried to block off the base runners, was unsuccessful. It just seems like that, you know, that long hop, that in between hop, it's so hard for catchers to handle. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely, especially coming off the grass. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, ideally you want to throw a bounce about five, eight feet out in front, maybe 10 feet, because you get the true hop and if it's accurate. But with two odds, figured, you know, Ebel's going to be sending the runner and it was going to take a perfect throw to get. Quinlan, and it was. Ready for Jake to Jake Fox because he's played different positions. Of course, catching, outfield, started out as a left fielder, and then back behind the plate. So a, a great throw for someone who's not spent a lot of time out there this year. Yeah, that was a very strong throw. Suzuki. Ahead in the count, 2 0. Saunders not a guy that will give in on 2 0. Change up stays outside. A 1 2 fastball last night, Jared Weaver. And Kurt Suzuki crushed it. Clubhouse, he said. I crushed that one. I said, yeah, night time for the ball to travel as well as that did. Jack Cuss followed him. Next inning going opposite field. A pitch. Called the strike on 3 0. Well, tonight I would say. Could have been called low. I would say the flags are whipping around really as much as I've seen at any time this year. Even the covering in the upper deck up on Mount Davis, you can see that rippling a little bit. You do not see that very often. Well, with the view quarters, and if you're an outfielder, infielder, you look at the flags. See, they, they're whipping around pretty good. Like you drop a fishing lure out there and catch some, <laughs> some fish. But you, you can't look at the flags because if you do that without throwing grass up, Especially in the outfield, throw the grass up, just see what it's doing. Right around you. Right, right around you, exactly, because it's going to be swirling. 3 2 is popped up on the infield. Franson, step into foul territory. He's got it side retired. He's going to hit. They leave a runner 
And we are headed to the fourth inning. It's the Angels 1 and the A's nothing. How many times Brayton throws the changeup two right handed hitters and what are the results? Called strike, swinging strike, a hit or a ball. Wow. Numbers around the square. Tell that's you all, that's all that stuff right there, right? Figure it out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. It's amazing. The diamond is a hit. 209 combo. <laughs> Bloomberg Sports is the leader in data analysis. It's developed an analytical product being used by baseball clubs. There's also a product for fans. Improve your fantasy player. Track your favorite players and teams. Go to BloombergSports.com for details. That's the way I used to look at math problems in grade school. Just stare at it and go, I have, no, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Two to Matsui. He'll be followed by Napoli and Rivera. Brayton just misses outside. Matsui hit into a 6-4-3 double play in the second inning. That was after Torrey Hunter let off the second with a base hit. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That is strikeout number three for Brayton. Two swinging, one looking. Uh, again, perfect placement, just like with Bobby Abreu, Matsui, left hander opening up. Now, Betty. And the pitch outside corner. Right. Watch the Napoli. hips. You see a hitter do that. He cannot reach a pitch that's outside. And plus, if you can't really tell if it's a strike or not. That close to the corner. Napoli had a base hit in the second inning. You know, it's Ron Romano. Yeah, I was going to say that's not Dino Bell, the normal third base coach. And another hit for Napoli. A line shot to left. 
And so Ron Radicke, the third base coach. Normally the bench coach. Well, that must have been Ron sending Quinlan instead of Dino. Maybe it was Dino <laughs> and Mike Sosha didn't like what happened. No, I'm yeah, just no. <laughs> they hit by Napoli, the fifth hit for the Angels off Dallas Braden. Juan Rivera who popped out to short ending the second inning. Pitch is high. Well, I talked about uh, the lack of run support. Dallas Braden when he pitches and. Well this is where you start to get concerned if you're a pitcher and you're not getting a lot of runs and he's given up one unearned run in this game. Trying one to nothing but. Every pitch is critical. You can't afford to make a mistake. And oh now to Rivera, make it two and oh. Kevin Franson in the on deck circle. Short lead for Napoli, and the pitch is hit to right center, but Sweeney actually more right field, and Sweeney has it for out number two. So Franson will hit Napoli still at first. Mikey, Kevin Franson. Now the Rangers just finished off a big win 12 to 2 over the Seattle Mariners so. Mariners. Texas with that half game lead over the Angels and the one game lead over the A's. Mariners had an early two to nothing lead but that was all the scoring. Yeah. CJ Wilson went seven innings, gave up the two earned runs. He got the win. He's five and three. Ian Snell got hammered. Seven earned runs in an inning and two thirds. He is 0 and 5. I'll give you some of the offensive numbers a little bit later on from that game. But Texas wins it. Those two teams will finish up that series tomorrow. It's a four game set. And then Seattle. Will be at San Diego this weekend. That is one of their interleague matchups this year. Texas will be at Milwaukee. So the Rangers head to Brewtown to take on the Brewers. The Western Division team gets to go to Miller Park. Well, where is Milwaukee? I don't know. <laughs> the, the A's plane does not know how to get to Milwaukee. I'd like to see the cheese heads. Branson hopes that one. But we do get to go to Wrigley Field, which will be fun next week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and then a day game at Wrigley on Thursday. Actually, it's going to be a fun week of baseball, even though it's a little different playing in the National League parks. But we have a good atmosphere this weekend. The A's and Giants playing, and then Wrigley, and then St. Louis. Crowds at the new ballpark in St. Louis. Little flare down the right field line, and Sweeney's going to play it on a hop. Napoli will go to third. Franson loops a single down the right field line, and the Angels have first and third with two outs. They just served it out. Sure, Jared Waver somewhere is saying, see, somebody else can do it besides the A's. He did quite a bit of that last night. I was ready the ball, check it up. Nice play to get to the ball. Here's Quintlin. Quick throw, and it got him. Braden picks off Franson, and that ends the fourth. How about that? I think that look right there says it all. We'll leave it at that. And another quick tag by Derek Barton.
All-Star Experience. Compliments of Scott. Bottom of the fourth, the Angels with a 1-0 lead. He's with three hits off Joe Saunders so far. He has not walked anybody. He has struck out one. Who's been off? Hits went high, deep, and foul. And home run distance, well far. Up at the barbecue terrace. A little party going on out there. Roger Davis' favorite spot. Maybe he's up there. He's only. <laughs> Bar ranging far to his left makes a nice play. Kuzman off is out, and that's the first out here in the fourth. Now Dallas Brayton did it again in the top half of the inning, and like the A's no, might be no, worried no, about the Angels no, scoring no, another no, run, but no, what a great kickoff no, move no, again no. by Dallas Brayton. Kevin Franson actually is getting a bigger lead. And something that Dallas Braden, fifth pickoff this season, most in the American League. And a great move to first base at an opportune time. Up the middle, and that will get through. Rosales has a base hit. Well, watch the lead of France at a first base. Takes a step, another step. I don't know, I can know his move, and bam, he got him leaning. Towards the second base, Franz and couldn't believe they got called out by Chair Chet You're right, the look of Mike Sosha from the dugout. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> well, he took that last little lead, and that was it. Yeah. That's what did it. That's why Dallas, being as quick as he is, he can see the runner with that extra lead and the lean. So that means he has to really stop and try to get back quickly, and it's not successful. Social. That was the look. Oh, and one to Ryan Sweeney, who struck out. Sweeney bounces this one just fine. So Sweeney behind in the count. Oh, and two. So, what camera is Peter on tonight? Oh, where's Pete? Pete Delonzo. Right, he's right now, he's probably not. Running that camera very well. <laughs> There's Pete. We'll tell you why Pete is not. In. That is an unhappy man right there. We'll tell you why. <laughs> Just final, the Chicago Blackhawks have won the Stanley Cup in six games to beat the Philadelphia Flyers. And the gentleman we showed right there, Pete Delonzo, great cameraman for a long time. He is a huge. What's, he What's the jack he's got on? Philadelphia Flyers. He's a huge Philadelphia fan from there. Loves all the Philadelphia teams, including the Flyers. Unfortunately for Pete, the Blackhawks just beat the Flyers, and Sweeney grounds into the double play, and just like that, the fourth inning comes to an end. On to the fifth at the Coliseum. One nothing, Angels.
went on to be all-stars. All right, folks, we're just going to let you sit on that one for a while. If you don't get one of them, you just should be ashamed of yourself. The final day of the 2010 draft wrapped up today. And all said and done. Rosales on the dive. Gets up. Throws to first in time. And Mike said she wanted to go out and argue, but he is not leaving his post in the dugout. Adam Rosales, a great diving stop of a hard hit ball by Quinlan. But had to hurry and get up and then took the step knowing he has a great great strong arm but a tremendous play and a little bit extra time and that's the reason Mike Sosha didn't go argue because he was out so sensational play by Solace and he was out Ivar lines one down the left field line fair. Fox picks it up in the corner and Ivar has his second hit. This one is a double. Just no chance and Ivar. Couple of hits. The other a oh, bunt. It's been over the head of Kevin Kuzminov. Two balls hit hard in this inning. Fortunately a great play by Adam Rosales to get one out. First pitch to Howie Kendrick is popped foul back. So in that draft, the A's, it's all said and done, took 35 college players, 15 high school players, 24 pitchers, four catchers, 14 infielders, and eight outfielders. So that is the wrap up of the 2010 Major League Baseball draft. Barton dives, knocks it down, scrambles after it, and throws to Braden, and they wow. got him at first. Unbelievable. Sosha wants to argue again. Well, maybe it's wondering wait a minute, the guy dives, the ball goes about five feet from him, and you're still thrown out. Right, Kendrick runs well enough. This you think was going to be a base hit, but Barton did not quit. Went after it, and again a bang bang with Brayton covering. And again, it looked like the right call was made. I did not even think Barton was going to make a play. No, I didn't Once he knocked the ball down, but Dallas Brayton, a very good athlete, figure if he's going to get there, might as well throw it to him. And again, a good call. Kendrick's foot about a foot. From the bag and got it. So two outs, uh, two great defensive plays, and here's Bobby Abreu. The runner's at third. That's Ibar. The second pitch for Dallas Brayton. Matt Carson to his right. He's got it side retired. So Brayden works his way out of the jam with lots of help from his defense. Bottom of the fifth coming up one nothing Angels.
ever. That was 1965, which four went on to be All-Stars. I'll let you sit on it for just a little while longer. Partner Ray Fossey, two <laughs> All-Star games. Rick Monday, two. Joe Coleman and Jim Spencer. Spencer, the first baseman, right? Is that the yeah. guy I'm thinking of? That's right. Jake Fox, very high. And it's going to be the center fielder, Torrey Hunter, who takes care of it. So that is out number one. See, we're digging up pictures of you. <laughs> that was a good one, too. <laughs> what I'd like to see, though, is that uh -huh. hair, that mustache. It's about 26, 26 when we turn back the clock <laughs> to the 70s. Okay. My partner and I are we're in negotiations on how far we want to go as far as dressing up. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Seventies now. One and one to Matt Carson, who hit a fly ball to center field in the second inning. At the end of the bat, a good changeup. Good changeup to a right handed hitter. That's what happens a lot. Well, we're talking about 70s now. How about Saturday, June 26th? He's take on the. Pirates and Bobby Crosby on 70s night. 70 music and entertainment will be throughout the evening as both the A's and Pirates wear 70 style uniform. 15,000 fans will get wrapped with a Joe Rudy jersey courtesy of Pepsi. And if you can really bring the party crowd with you, groups of 25 or more fans that night will get free fake mustaches. Group seating, visit OaklandAthletics.com. I still say, start growing one. Got to run that by a few people who would probably say no. So. You need to start growing a mustache? <laughs> Are you saying somebody at home? Got to get out of the house with the mustache first. I think you could just maybe get a fake one. Quinlan he handles it. The windy weather. And three up, three down inning for Joe Saunders. So the sixth inning coming up. Still one nothing. Enjoy. <laughs> no. No, that does not happen. It does not happen. You have to have a specific media pass to get up here. And of course, the security guards here at the Coliseum do a great job under the tutelage of David Renetti, vice president in charge of stadium operation. So, no, uh, it would be very difficult for a fan to get up here. 
Unless they're bringing food. Unless they're bringing food, they are allowed to come. But they have to get permission. Because the elevators are guarded. And one time, of course, 9 11 unfortunately changed a lot of things. And it used to be a way into the. Pennington, he's not going to be able to make a play. It's going to be a hit for Hunter. Into the press box area, Bill King was broadcasting a game. The fan walked right in the booth. And Bill, <laughs> Bill didn't care whether he's on the air or not. He let that fan know, what are you doing? Well, that was great. <laughs> but in the Bill King broadcasting booth, Bill was there. And, and it, I mean, the guy just walked right in the back of the booth and sat down. Just like he had been invited. <laughs> That's pretty funny. No, you're right. It, it's much tougher yeah. now to get into a, a press box. Line drive, and that's going to get down for a hit. So Hunter singles, and then Matsui singles. That's nine hits for the Angels. Well, I would have loved to see Bill's face. That would oh. listen. That well, would be priceless. You, you could just close your eyes and listen to him. <laughs> you didn't have to see him. <laughs> but, you know, in reality, it is. And, and even for people who come up during the game, it, it's important. It is a working area. People yep. are working in the press box area. Whether it's broadcasters, the print media, they're writing stories. And there's the radio. There's our man B.I. Yeah. right there. Yeah, B.I. is there. There's James on camera, but the uh, radio guys next to us on the other side of us, the Angels radio. Well, and then you're talking a whole bunch of writers, both yeah. sides of us, there's writers. It seems like the Yankees come in, Boston. All those people are working, so it's very quiet in that area. With the Deki Matsui, there's a pretty heavy Japanese yeah. contingency. One and one to Mike Napoli. Napoli, a pair of line drive singles in this game. Three for ten in the series. And he takes a stride. Dallas Braden, with the exception of a one, two, three first inning, he is just out of the stretch ever since then. Trying to get out of another tough jam. Pretty good hitter. Change up and he got him swinging up and just kind of floated outside. And Napoli chased it. And after the fastball in the first at bat, they've got a base hit. Fastball second at bat. Mike Napoli with Dallas Braden throwing hard and the circle changed way out of the strike zone, but Napoli always aggressive. Swung and missed a pitch by several feet. So here's Rivera. Brad Ziegler starts to throw. 81 pitches for Dallas Braden so far in the game. We're in the sixth. Angels scored the only run in the game in the third. They have they put pressure on Braden the whole game. Only three up, three down inning was the very first. So a report today on MLB.com where Kendry Morales the injured angel is set to have surgery tomorrow. I know they had to wait a little while. There was a lot of swelling in the leg. broken leg. It's the lower leg is where it happened. Should happen tomorrow. Well, they do not know how long he's going to be out either. Well, I just think it would be hard to plan on seeing him. And be productive again this year. Mike Sosha just basically knows that, I mean, he's probably planning for him to be out all year. And if he comes back, able to make it back, that's a bonus. But they will be playing accordingly until he is ready. 
Line drive base hit center field. Carson charges. They're going to hold Torrey Hunter. He runs through the stoplight, and he's going to score. Rod Renicky had the red light, and Hunter just hesitated a little bit, but then he decided, I'm just going to keep coming, and he made it. Yeah, he had made up his mind to score anyway on the hit to center field. Hit hard, and that's the reason Ron Renicky was holding up Torrey Hunter because it was a one hop to Matt Carson. This ball, though, hit, was thrown to Derek Barton right at the mound, short hop the mound. No ground ball, no possible double play. And just running. So sometimes it works out, that time it did. Bob Garen's coming out. 85 pitches for Braden. And the hitter is Kevin Franson, his right handed hitter. Don't ask him how he's feeling. That was Braden. He is fine. No, Braden's going to get a chance to work his way out of this. A run in for the Angels, and they have first and second. One out. Has given up 10 hits now in the game as Kevin Franson steps in. Interesting numbers for Dallas Brayton. Franson is one for two. Hit a bloop single down the right field line, his last at bat. He reached on an air in the third and ended up scoring the first run. It's off the glove of Kuzmanov, flicked up by Pennington, and he gets the out at second. But Pennington right there, and he was able to quickly field it and get the out. But sometimes the deflection no, works no, out. This time it does with Kuzmanov getting the early dirty, diving it. Cliff Pennington going over to field the ball as well, and went right to him, and a quick throw to second. And they get the sliding. Rivera, who is not fleet of foot, so the only play was to try to get the force. Nice stretch by Rosales to get it. Here's Quinlan. Matsui now the runner at third, Franson at first. There's a strike on the outside corner. Franson's getting a very big lead this time? No. He got picked off again. He's from San Jose, so he probably has family here. He should probably just get right in the car and go back home with them. Mike Sosha would lose his mind. Benson went to San Jose State. Quinlan a walk, and he was robbed of a hit by Rosales. That got Kurt Suzuki big time. Back of the hand. Back of the hand. He's taking a beating lately. It's Kurt Suzuki. Well, this is if you want to be a catcher, watch this shot. That's it. Right hand just the game. Got hit. <laughs> the throw with a ball that bounced up last night. Off the left shoulder. That's just this home stand. You will not hear him complain either. Quintlet fouls it straight back. Here's the last one. Watch the right hand. But it's got to be out because his runner's on base and ball just above the hand, maybe a little bit on. You see how his hand is kind of relaxed? That's the key. You don't want to tighten the fist. 
because it really hurts that way. A little looper center field Carson coming in and he's going to have to play it on a hop. Matsui comes in to score. Quinlan comes through and it's 3 nothing Angels. Just a little flip job to center field. And Bob Guerin's coming out. So a couple of runs for the Angels here in the sixth that they take a three nothing lead and when it's time for a change think speedy oil change in tune up your oil change tune up in smog expert Ziegler comes. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. 3 nothing Angels. Dallas Braden out of the game, five and two-thirds innings. His runners are still out there. Ziegler faces the top of the order, Eric Ibach. A lot of hits tonight, 11 off Braden. Well, they say things average out, uh, but watch what the A's did last night 16 singles, and not all of them were solid base hits tonight. It's Dallas Braden kind of the reversal. If you the hits tonight, kind of the same way, especially the last one, the Quinlan just looped into center field. But they are line drives. Every one of them in the paper this morning, line drive. Yep. So Brad Ziegler trying to keep this a three run deficit for the A's. Sounders pitch a shutout against the A's on the 14th of May, and he's doing it again tonight. He's find a way to score some runs. Three and one now to Ibar. Ibar's had a good night. Two for three. Single in the third, double in the fifth. He struck out his first at bat. Angels hoping when it's all said and done that Eric Geibar can turn into the kind of offensive player that Sean Figgins. Carson racing back is back to home plate, still going back, and it's off the wall. Bounces away, and Ibar is going to race to third, and they will hold him there. Two runs are going to score. And a big night for Eric Ibar, a two run triple. On the 3 1 count and a fastball bell time. And a shadow, which he should because he's going to have a lot of line drives. But this one, Matt Carson off the wall, going for it as far as he could. And 
the ball carried back. He was going to be an easy triple for high bar. Unfortunately, it wasn't an inside the park home run. So a four spot by the Angels here in the top of the sixth inning. Kendrick looking for his first hit. Mike Riley got one. It's a chilly night at the ballpark, so that doesn't help any. Toward left field, Fox, he's got it, side retired. Four runs on five hits for the Angels in the top of the six, so the bottom of the six coming up, five nothing. Angels. Light Freeze Camp is brought to you by Frost Brood, Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Work to do for the A's as we have hit the bottom of the sixth inning. Ellis, Barton, and Suzuki, the top three in the A's lineup. These have four hits off Joe Saunders. He has not walked anybody and he has struck out just one. Now three and one to Ellis. Mark the base in the first and a line out to the first baseman in the third. That's at the Coliseum, four and one in his career. Line drive right into the glove of Kevin Franson. So Mark Ellis could easily be three for three. Instead, he's one for three with a pair of lineouts. You know, the A's did nothing in the first inning after getting the first two runners on base. That was kind of the beginning of what we were going to see tonight. Joe Saunders settling down and giving up just the Rosales hit and a Barton hit since then. Drives one center field, but Tory Hunter reaches down right at the last minute and makes the catch. Two outs. Looks like that one had a little action on it. Knuckleball action or something. Well, it sounded right off the bat. It just kind of died in center field. It's a cool night. Two outs for Kurt Suzuki. A 
fastball high to Suzuki who has popped out twice once to the second baseman and once to the third baseman in foul territory. Ground fair ball. Franson throws on the run and a nice play by Kevin Franson. And Joe Saunders settling in. He's retired seven in a row. We had two to seven, five nothing Angels. Got a giant appetite. It's got to be nations. The Giambi brothers going deep in the same game in A's uniforms. You know what is strange about those home runs? Seeing an empty stadium in Anaheim in 2000. And not a lot of red. We'll not be seeing that today. That would be packed house every game. There's Jason still playing with the Colorado Rockies. Seventh inning here at the Coliseum. Angels with a five to nothing lead. And Bobby Abreu to lead it off. He'd be followed by Tori Hunter and Hideki Matsui. Abreu is hitless in this game. 0 for 3. 2 for 11 in the series. So Dallas Braden ends up giving them five earned runs in five and two thirds innings. Center field where Matt Carson has a plan, and that is one out. Bobby Abreu is 0 for 4. And that's your chance to receive a buzz cut from A's outfielder and team barber Rajay Davis at a Supercuts Salon. Enter by emailing buzzcut at oaklandathletics.com or by mailing a postcard with your contact for information to Rajay Davis Buzz Cut Promotion, 7000 Coliseum Way, Oakland, California 94621. Entries must be received by June 16th. Coming up very quickly, a week from today. That's right. What is today? I don't even know. The ninth, huh? Yeah, that would be a week from today, and that gentleman probably 
Started growing a beard, said I'm going to let it grow until the A's win another World Championship. It's been 21 <laughs> years. 20 years, so maybe it's not the hockey playoff beard. It's now he'll go see Raji. Two and one to Tory Hunter. Coming into this game, Hunter did not have a hit in the series. Different story tonight. Three for three. Picked up his 40th RBI in the third inning. And yes, he did go around, says Mike Wright. Two outs here in the seventh. And he just could not open up his swing, and Mike Riley stood up and could actually see a lot of the bat go forward. And it was he who made the call. Takes low. Matsui's one for three, singled and scored in the sixth. Everything's final in the American League. Texas beating Seattle 12 to 2. Vladimir Guerrero had three more hits, a couple more RBIs. He's hitting 336. I think he's just trying to tell everybody he was he's not finished. Yep, that's exactly right. He continues to play, and it's especially in Arlington, where he has had a lot of success playing for the Angels against the Rangers, so it's the ballpark and I think in his case, he likes it so much, he's happy to be there and playing all of his home games there. Something about that place that he is always liked. I still say when the weather heats up, he's going to like that in terms of the Dominican Republic. He likes the warm weather. Well, he had two more RBIs there. He's got 51 RBIs. Second most in the American League. Back to Young Homer, Josh Hamilton Homer. Hamilton had a homer and three RBIs. He's got 12 now. Swing and a miss. Matsui strikes out. A couple of strikeouts for Brad Ziegler. Seventh inning stretch from the Coliseum. Still 5 0 Angels.
will try to change that here in the seventh. Angels with a five to nothing lead. Saunders has retired seven in a row. And remember the last time he faced the A's, complete game shutout. Four hitter. Averaging about 10 pitches per inning. He's just number 65, so he had 63 two through the six innings. There's a 3 0 pitch that's in for a strike. Kuzman off a fly ball to right field and a ground out to short. And he's got a base hit right center field. Bray was able to cut it off, so Kuzminov a leadoff hit. Base baseball Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Cash Creek's Splash of Cash with hundreds of prizes every day until July 5th. Visit CashCreek.com for details. So maybe a start. For the A's here in the seventh inning with the Kuzminov leadoff signal. Rosales takes low. Rosales, a base hit in the fourth. He also grounded out to short in his first at bat. Two of them. The yard work. Hey. <laughs> so, is that a seventy nice chance? Yeah, well, that's he's getting ready. It's practice. Yeah, one time it's the hitter did that. Look at him. He ain't not done yet. You know what the pitcher would do? Throw at him. Oh. <laughs> Some pitchers you do that and then you look out and then you get down on your hands and knees and start smoothing it out and say, I'm sorry, I yeah. didn't mean to do that. You gotta get comfortable. Three-oh pitch is in for a strike. He's need a bunch of base runners. Low ball four. Well, they got two of them. There's Rosala speeds to first. Be kind of hard for so sure though he's going to get the bullpen going. He's only thrown 72 pitches, but all of a sudden now the five run lead a single on a 3 1 pitch and a walk on a 3 1 pitch. Yeah. Put your heads back. Sweeney on the ground to short. Could be two. Second for one, and that's a double play. Quinlan digs it out. So for the second time tonight, Ryan Sweeney hits into a 6 4 3 double play. So two outs and a runner at third. So we up to Jake Fox to try to get the A's on the board. The left-hander Cedric Bowers starts to loosen up. Toward the second baseman Kendrick, and that will do it. So the inning started well. But A's can do nothing with a couple of base runners. Eighth inning coming up, five nothing.
CBS Sports Center Bay Area. Baseball, football, and big news that was broken right here on Comcast Sports Net. Rob Blake, the Sharks captain, retired after a very long and terrific career in the NHL. There'll be more on that. So it's coming up tonight on Sportsnet Central, 1030 on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and swap experts. Cedric Bowers takes over. Fred Ziegler, an inning and a third. And now Cedric Bowers, the left hand. First pitch, a fastball to Napoli, who swings and misses. And Brad Ziegler, good job in this inning and a third, but did give up the two run triple. Eric Ibar, and big difference, but so far the A's have not done anything against Joe Saunders even last inning. First and second. Visit by his pitching coach and he throws two pitches and gets three outs. That quickly, the A's threat over just as was the case in the first inning. Oh and two. And curveball and a good one. Snappily swings and misses. And he says I fouled it off, but I don't think so. And that'll be a strikeout for Bowers. You have to hit a ball that was in the dirt if he did. I think he missed. I don't think so. I think anything, something he heard that maybe the ball hit in the ground, popping up in the mitt. Kurtz is looking. That's why he had to tag him. Rivera takes outside. Rivera's one for three. He had an RBI single in that four run sixth inning. Dallas Braden starting tonight his 13th start, but in his previous 12 starts, six, he received one or fewer runs. Runs a quick. Tonight, another zero. So seven of 13, and Sonata Zuki is a goose egg for him and for the team so far. Racing back, still going back at the wall, and he runs right into the wall, and the ball is gone. So Juan Rivera homers, and Matt Carson gets up. Thank goodness. Well, you cannot say Matt Carson. He's not giving his all here. Tom Kissel, <laughs> California. Wow. Slow down. <laughs> oh, man. Goodness. Oh, wow. Ow. Wow. Ow. Oh. <laughs> he looked at the wall and said, You still standing? I was going to say, if the wall doesn't <laughs> fall over there, it's never, never going to fall. Never going to fall. Wow. He got a red nose. He should have his whole face. Wow. Glad he's okay. Wow. And when it's all said and done, it's home run number nine for Juan Rivera, but not without a valiant effort by one Matt Carson. I thought you were going to say speedy oil change on this one. Just full speed. I mean, we could chuckle because he got up, and, but I mean, you don't see that. Usually, a guy comes up short, but the only thing that stopped him was the wall. I was thinking maybe he doesn't like Comcast Sports in <laughs> California. Wow. He took us on there head on. Guess who won? <laughs> you know, Clay Wood 
changes this field to football. He'll be doing that in August. But even changing, it's a pretty sturdy fence. Yes, it is. Puts it back together. And it's not really a surprise if tomorrow somebody goes out and puts a body no against question. the Comcast. No question. So they've done a few times in Minneapolis, the old Metrodome, put tape in the body. It's like you draw the outline on the ground or you put it on the wall. Rosales charges, flips to first, and that's the second out. Francis. <laughs> well, I got a few ideas on who oh, yeah. would do it yeah. on the ace team, but we won't go there. Now, buddy. Number 39. And on the side, you go one, one. Carson zero. Yep. You know, they're, they're post beyond the padded wall. You don't want to hit one that of those. Holds, that holds oh, up the fence. Yeah, you want to make sure you get it in the middle where it's full padding. I mean, Delilah should make a copy of that or have Adam Road make a copy and just give it to Matt Carson when he walks in the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Another foul ball by Rob Quinlan. Where did, his, where did his head I was going to say, hit. down to the bottom oh. there's a rip, and that's from his spikes, but that one right there, I don't know where that came from. A curveball for Powers, and gets a couple of strikeouts, but he gives up the home run to Juan Rivera. So we're headed to the bottom of the eighth. Matt Carson's okay. We're happy about oh, that. Yeah. Six nothing Angels. Here's our game summary brought to you by McDonald's. 6 13 and 0 for the Angels, 0 5 and 1 for the Athletics. So, the story right now is Joe Saunders, who this time out against the Athletics, a shutout, doing it again tonight. And we're in the bottom of the eighth. Carson to lead it off, swings and misses. Saunders has had a good changeup, he's got a lot of outs with that changeup. Not necessarily swings and misses, but maybe that's even better to get outs with the changer. That one line down the left field line. Just foul. That would only have been justice if he hit a home run. Because when you make great plays, you always lead off the next inning. And yeah. <laughs> well, he's still off. He might still be feeling it just a little bit too quick. Hoping the ball went far enough to hit the foul pole. Not a fair pole. Home run distance just pulled it a little bit. 
Connor had a great play. Yep. That's a check his swing, and they're going to check down to first. Chad Fairchild says no swing. So a full count. The changeup and it's hit toward right center. Easy play for Tory Hunter. One out. Well, that's confidence too with a changeup six to nothing lead. Saunders working on a five hitter. That confidence to throw a changeup three and two. And he knows the hitter's going to be sitting fastball. And normally it would be looking fastball. Kind of look at the score. First pitch strike to Cliff Pennington. The Indians shut out the Boston Red Sox tonight. 11 0. It was Justin Masterson with a complete game, two hit shutout. So that young man. Line drive going back is Rivera, and he reaches out right at the last minute and he makes the catch. Two outs. Hitting to the line, drive to second for an out, and this one he hit that thought Rivera might not be able to get to it, stuck up his glove, and there it was. Uh, Masterson, that's two runs in a row, isn't it? Yeah, and I was, I was saying, I, I mean, he's a young kid. I think he's going to be a really good yeah. pitcher in the big league. Just, well, he, he won for the first time in his last start. He had a long, long losing streak, and was traded from the Red Sox to the Indians and put in the rotation. And, Pitched well. Yeah, he's two and five. The Rays beat Toronto ten to one behind David Price. How about the career, or how about the year that David Price is having? With the win today, he's nine and two, and he's got a 2.23 ERA. So he has become one of the better pitchers in the American League. Yankees beat Baltimore four to three behind CC Sabathia. Sixth win for Sabathia and the 14th save for Rivera. CC Sabathia in his career ray against the Baltimore Orioles is now 13 and one. High fastball swing and a miss by Mark Ellis. So another three up, three down inning for Joe Saunders. Ninth inning coming up, six nothing Angels.
today to see every A's game live or on demand on your computer when you're out of town. Visit OaklandAthletics.com to order and get more details. MLB.TV, baseball everywhere. Cedric Bowers, first pitch he throws to Eric Guybar is hit to left field for a base hit. And that means that Eric Guybar has a four hit night, four for five. Now, buddy, number 47. And that is the 14th Howie hit Kendrick. in the game for the Angels. Well, whether it's right handed, left handed, he's got a very good swing. Yep. He's 18 hits last night, and tonight the Angels come right back in double figures. The series finale tomorrow, and it is a day game here at the Coliseum. A's pregame live at noon here in Comcast Sportsnet, California. And then the ball game comes your way half hour later. Trevor Cahill, Urban Santana. Cahill, four and two. Santana, six and three. So that is the matchup. Join us at noon. Josh good at it again, huh? No. He's good. Base hit right field. Kendrick goes the other way, and he has his first hit. So two on, nobody out for Bobby Abreu. But Trevor Cahill's pitching very well for Number the athletics. Bobby Abreu. Cahill's you know, pitch of the month. Month of May, four and one in the month, and said, come out tomorrow and try to, if the A's don't make a comeback tonight, try to split the series. First things first, maybe three more outs, a big comeback in store for the A's. Swing and a miss by a break. On the weekend, Gonzalez and Linsa come on Friday, Sheets and Zito on Saturday. Zero Kane on Sunday. And then it's to Chicago on Monday. These and it comes at Wrigley Tuesday. For the A's fans uh, paying attention this weekend, one of those games is going to be something special leading up to the turn back the clock game against the Pirates. With regard to tickets, so stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know is. Get closer to that date. It's a good thing. Yes, it is. All good. One and two to Bobby Abreu. Side corner strike three call. Abreu is 0 for 5 with two strikeouts. A big sweeping breaking ball. And Mike Riley likes it. Pretty good spot right on the outside corner. So one out for Torrey Hunter. Swing and a miss by Hunter. The Giants lost their game today in Cincinnati. They will play a day game tomorrow, just like the A's, and then return home. Torrey Hunter's a three hit game tonight three for four, three singles, and a strikeout. Curveball by Cedric Bowers, and whether it's righties or lefties, Joe Saunders, 88 pitches, he'll be going back out for the ninth. Hunter 
fights off that fastball in the inside corner. So Bowers getting a good workout tonight. This would be his 28th pitch. Blocked by Suzuki. Even the count at two and two. The inning started with a single by Ibar and then a single by Kendrick and a brave with the strikeout. Hunter had a good swing that time, fouled it straight back. Saunders has been in complete control tonight. Does he look tired? He does not look tired. He's not sweating. Got him swinging. The power strikes out Tory Hunter. Time now for the Jeep drive of the game, and has had a good night. And he had a big two-run triple. Eric Ibar off Brad Ziegler, a three-one fastball. Ziegler a little bit of a jump, and Matt Carson. Gonna stop this time in front of the wall. I by excellent speed, driving in two. And that made it a five to nothing game. A big hit for Ibar, and it's our Jeep driving the game. He struck out on a fastball from Dallas Braden in the first inning. Fastball inside. And four hits. The rest of the game. Four for five. Matsui is one for four. There's a base hit to right field. They're going to wave home Ibar. Sweeney's throw to the plate he is just a bit late, and Ibar scores, and that's an RBI signal for Matsui. Seven nothing. Kendrick goes around to third. Now with two outs and Matsui hard hit ball right swinging with a, a very strong arm strong throw and another short pop skip by Kurt Suzuki but the speed of Ibar no chance to get him this time. Well, Smith Mike couldn't tag the, the plate with his hand he was going so fast. Blocked by Suzuki. So Matsui gets his 34th RBI. And the Angels now have 16 hits in the game. Another ball in dirt blocked by Kurt. Why Zook doesn't have to go to the bullpen before a game and work on blocking balls in the no. dirt. He used to, remember? Yeah. I've seen him down there before the game. Doesn't have to, and now gets the work dirty. Does <laughs> such a good job. Technique is perfect, so you can. One thing he is doing now with the score being what it is, he said, heck with that right hand. He's got hit enough today. So he's put the right hand, he's throwing hand behind his back. To Napoli. Napoli's two for four. Two singles, two strikeouts. High into foul territory. Barton near the seats, and he's got it right in front of the seats. Nice play by Derek Barton. Side retired a run on three hits and the Angels strand a pair seven nothing as we head to the bottom of the night.
and by Chevy with a full lineup of award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Well, there is the story right there. Joe Saunders. Last pitcher with consecutive shutouts and two straight starts against the A's. Jamie Moyer back in 1998. Moyer was with the Mariners. Saunders trying to do it tonight. He did it on May 14th. A four hit shutout. He's with five hits tonight. Barton Suzuki and Kuzminov. That was drilled. Left center field, and nobody's going to get it. And one hops the wall. So Derek Barton has a leadoff double here in the bottom of the ninth. Barton is three for four. And all three hits the exact location in the left center. This one driven very nicely with a 2 0 count. Fastball low and away, but still. Great drive by Derek Barton. Perfect swing. And there, he with the ball slicing back. The man slides back enough. He was playing shallow. Saunders has thrown 91 pitches, so the pitch count is not an issue at this point. Suzuki looking for his first hit. That one a strike on the outside corner. A sinking fastball. Well, the Texas Rangers won their game earlier. 12 to 2 over the Seattle Mariners. High pop up. Abreu coming in. And he's got it. And that is out number one here in the ninth. Kurt Suzuki up in the first inning, first and second, and popped up to second. A good night. The guys have pounded at 18 hits last night. He's have hit into a couple of double plays. Ryan Sweeney both times. The seventh inning was the one that hurt. Although at that point the A's were down by quite a bit. Base hit center field. Here comes Barton and the shutout is gone as Kuzminov singles home Barton and it's seven to one. Uh, right down the middle of the changeup and just passed. Saunders put up his glove, missed his glove as the ball was hit too hard by Kuzmina. So Kuzminov gets his second hit and his 31st run batted in. Here's Rosales. Just a little bit outside. Rosales has been on base twice with a single and a walk. That's grounded. Fair ball. Franson has it to second for one, and the out will be at second. Rosales beats the throw to first. Two outs. Rosales aboard on the fielder's choice. That's about all they were going to get. Not even a chance to get the speed of Rosales. So last hope for the A's is Ryan Sweeney. Rosales takes off and he will go to second.
right on the outside corner at the knees. One and one the count. This next pitch will be number 100 for Saunders. Matt Lee scrambles after it. Steps off. He wants to go through the signs one more time. Slowly hit towards short. Ibar charges, throws on the run, and that's the ball game. Well, Joe Saunders does not get the shutout, but he gets his fourth career complete game, and he really was in charge for the whole evening. Eric Ibar, the shortstop, a terrific night, going four for five, and the Angels come back and win game three of this four-game series, seven to one. Angels get 16 hits tonight. The A's get seven. So the A's 31 and 30 now. They lose the game in the standings.